All right, so we're looking at how to solve it with row reduced echelon form. We have a system of three equations with three variables. And we start out, first of all, by writing out the augmented matrix. Remember, the augmented matrix has the coefficients of x in the first column, the coefficients of y in the second column, the coefficients of z in the third column, and then the fourth column is what all of those equal. All right, so you have this understood equal sign going down the middle here, okay? That's uh, where your equal sign would be, and you might remember your book had little dots through there. If you want to put those there, that's fine. You don't have to. So remember our goal. Our goal is to get our matrix in this form right here where you have one, zero, zero, and a number. Because remember, that represents x with no y's or z's equals a. And then zero, one, zero, and zero, zero, one. And the basic strategy we're gonna use here is to get the one in the column first, then get the two zeros, okay? Then the next thing we're gonna do is get the one in the second column and then find, you know, get those to be zeros. Then we're going to get the one in the third column and end up by getting those two zeros. And by the time we do that, then we'll have all three of our answers. Okay? Once you get the hang of the process here, it actually turns out to be a pretty simple process to, to follow, okay? So let's, let's work through this one here together, all right? First of all, understand this. There are a lot of ways that you could solve this using, um, using row reduced echelon form and using the three different things that we're allowed to do, okay? For example, I want to get a 1 right there. That's the goal of this first step. Now, I could do this a bunch of different ways. What are some ways that we could get a 1 there? Switch on the first column and the third column. Well, wait, we're not going to switch columns because oh, oh, then you're moving your oh, X's rows, and Z's rows, around. Sorry. Yeah, switch your oh, rows. <laughs> okay. And we'll go ahead and write that one down since that's the first one we came up with. You're, we're going to switch. Could you multiply just the first row by negative one? That's one? another way we could do it. We could multiply that first row by negative one. Okay. We could also add row two and row one. Because two minus one would give us a one. Or we could subtract row 2 and row 3 and then put that up in row 1 and move row 1 down to somewhere else. Okay? Well, no, because we'd, we'd move them around and we'd keep one of these two and put the result in as the other one and then switch things around. Anyways, there's a lot of different ways that we could do it. All right. Yes? What is the point of switching? The point of switching is to get this positive 1 where we want it to be. All right, so we're putting row 3 now up here. We're moving row 1 down here, okay? And that middle row is just staying the same. And remember, the reason why we're allowed to do this is because, remember, each row represents an equation. And it doesn't matter which order you write these equations in, okay? Now notice we're not just switching the negative one and one, we're moving, we're switching the entire row. Mm -hmm. This first uh, row better be positive always? It's always going to be positive. This will always, we want to always end up being a positive one. And the third point is negative? In this case it just happens to be. Right. Okay, the rest of it we don't really care about at this point. Mm -hmm. If you had something like 
an equation that was all divisible by two, and you could get it to equal to one, can you divide like the entire yes. equation by something? Yeah, and that's actually a lot of times that's how we're going to get this to be a one and this to be okay, or so this to be a one. A row, you can also divide row two. Yeah, because if you think about it, it's like you're multiplying yeah. by one over or something. Okay. So, yeah. All right, so we've got our first step done. Now what we want to do is we're going to leave our first row alone. So we have that 1, negative 2, 3, and 9. But our goal on this step is to get the two zeros that we want in that first column. Okay? To do that, okay, to do that, I'm going to take this row 2 and I'm going to combine it with row 1 somehow. I can add or subtract or I could multiply and add or something like that. The, the key here is don't make it more complicated than it has to be. I have a 2. How do I get that to be a 0? I subtract 2. So since that's a 1, I could just subtract 2 of row 1. Okay? So follow this. This 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. Right? Okay? Negative 5, I had... I thought I had my ringer up. I don't know why my wife is gone. That's my wife's. So... Um, what? There we go. <laughs> Maybe you can right. cut that part of so, the video off. <laughs> we take negative 2 times negative 2 because we're subtracting 2 root 1, so that's a positive 4. Negative 5 plus 4 negative is now negative 1. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. 5 minus 6 is. Negative 1. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. So 17 minus 18 is negative 1. This one actually turned out pretty nicely. Okay? I'm multiplying this first row. It's kind of like the elimination where we're pairing things up okay. to eliminate one of the variables. We're kind of eliminating the x's here. All right. Mm -hmm. All right? So your goal is to get just the first, um, the first one equal to zero. And yeah. Everything else out there. Everything else we don't really care what that equals are right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Could you also multiply the third row by two? And at this point, yes, you could. All right. What I'm going to recommend though is that you guys get into the habit of whatever row has the one in it. Use that row to change the other two. <coughs> okay? Because on the next step, it will make a difference. You won't be able to do it without messing up the zeros you already got. Okay? So here for row three, I'm going to take row one. And how can I combine row three and row one to Plus. get a zero here? I just add them together. Okay? A negative one plus a one is zero. A 3 plus a negative 2 is 1. A 1 plus a 3 is a 4. And negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Okay? I'm simply adding row 3 and row 1 together to get my new row 3. Okay? Is this a, uh, is this a rule that you're going to do in every single uh, question? Yeah, you can solve any 3x3 three three system of equations this way. And the nice thing is the process is the same. Get the 1, then work to get your zeros. Okay. What if there's no 1? Make it a 1. If there was no 1, then you could, if it was a 3, you could divide the whole row by 3 if you wanted. Or combine two of the rows in some way to get it to equal 1. If you combine the rows, like how would you go about doing that? Would you just like we did here. One of them will stay put just as it was. Like in this case, we used row 1. 
We left row one there, and we replaced the other one with the result. So if you were to say combine row one and two, then that, oh, that's what we did. We combined mm -hmm. row one and two, but row one was multiplied by two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now our next step here. Can you switch rows still? Yes. Okay. Now we can still switch rows. So if we want to get... Switch two and three. Um, yeah. Yeah. The key is we want to get a one right here. Okay? We already have the one, zero, zero. Okay? We want to get a one right there. All right, so we're going to leave the first row alone, negative 2, 3, and 9. And since we have a 1 in our third row, I'm just going to switch and make it 1, 4, 7 there, and negative 1, negative 1, negative 1 there. Okay? So again, we're switching row 2 and row 3. Okay. What if there's no way to like, like how are we going to make row 1 0 without changing the 1? Like how would there... Well, now that we have our 1, we can combine row 2 with row 1, and since that's already a 0, it's not going to mess up the 1 that we have. So you just like... You don't even worry about the first column? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and that's why you get the one in the column and then zero out the other two before you try to work on the second column. Okay. okay. So now that we have the one here, okay, I'm going to leave row two alone, and this is already a one, zero, zero. Row two is going to stay the same for right now. But now I need to combine row 1 with row 2, and I'm going to combine row 3 with row 2 in order to get a 0 here and a 0 here. Multiply row 2 by 2. Okay. All right, so row 1, we have a negative 2. We need to add 2 to it. So let's add 2 of row 2. Okay? So watch. Negative 2 here plus 2 is 0. Okay? 3 plus 2 times 4. 3 plus 8 will be 11. And then we have 9 plus 14, 2 times 7 is 14, 9 plus 14 is 23. Okay? So we've got our row 1, we've got the 0 where we wanted it. Mm -hmm. Could you also um, combine row 3 and row 1 to change row 3? Well, we can't. If we combine row 3 with row 1 to try to get a 0 here, mm -hmm. notice you're going to mess up the 0 that you have in row 3 already. But well, like if you, if you did a negative 2 times row, yeah, negative 2 times row 3, wouldn't that not mess up the 0? Oh, to get the 0 in row 1. No, to get it in row 3. No. If you do it to try to get the zero here in row three, you're going to mess up the zero you already have in row three. Technically, at this point, you could use row three to get your zero up in row one, but you can't do the other way around. Okay. Oh, right. I see, because then you have to add the zero in one. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that's why I recommend always use the row that you just got the one in to, to change the other two, okay? So in this case, we have a 1, we have a negative 1 that we need to make into a 0. So what are we going to do with row 3 and row 2? Uh, just add. Just add them, okay? So 1 plus a negative 1 is 0. Obviously, 0 plus 0 is 0. 
4 plus a negative 1 is 3, and 7 plus a negative 1 six. is 6. So we are 2 thirds of the way done. Almost. Okay? None of these problems will ever take more than four, six steps. Okay? Sometimes they'll take even less if you get lucky and we got a one here or something like that. Okay? They'll never take more than six steps. So now, now my goal is I want to get zero, zero, one something. I still have this. I still have this, okay? At this point, we're gonna leave the second and the first rows alone until we get this one. But how would I get a one here if I have zero, zero, three, six? Times one, one third. Yeah, times a third, or divide by three. We're gonna take row three and take one third of it. Think about what this is. This is just saying three Z equals six, right? Yeah. So now we know z equals 2. 2. We already know one of our answers. Okay? z equals 2. So now this is almost like we're doing back substitution. We're just doing it in the matrix. Okay? Because now what we're going to do is we are going to... Row 2 minus row 3. We have this. We have this. Now we're trying to get these to be zeros. And once we do, we'll have our answers. Okay? Once we do, we'll have our answers. Okay? So. How are we going to combine? Remember, we want to use row 1, and this time we're going to use row 3 to change it because that's the one that has the 1 in it. We have row 2, and we need to change that using row 3. Okay? So, how are we going to do that? Row 1 minus 11. Uh, yeah, row we need to subtract 11 to get a 0. So 11 times 2 is 22. So 23 minus 22 is 1. So that tells us x equals 1. Okay? And obviously 11 minus 11 would be 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. So none of that changed. Okay? And then also, how are we going to combine row 2 with row 3? Minus four. We're going to subtract 4 of row 3. All right, so 7 minus 8. And negative 1. Negative 1. So now we know that y equals negative 1. And you might say, I really like elimination rather than messing with all that. Yes. The fact of the matter is, mathematically, you're doing all the same stuff, but I don't have to write down x, y, and z on all my steps, and all the equal signs and all that stuff. So it's less writing. You have to kind of keep track of things a little bit better in your head. But the reality is, if you do this, like I said, it'll never take more than six steps. Okay. It'll never take more than six steps. So, all right, so we've solved the system. X is 1, Y is negative 1, and Z is 2.